today i am going to tell you about anaplastic thyroid carcinoma so in thyroid gland you can have different types of thyroid malignancy so it is broadly classified as differentiated and undifferentiated differentiated in the sense the cells is the same cell which is seen inside the thyroid gland it is multiplied that is what is called as differentiated so in that you have papillary and follicular type in undifferentiated it is not the same cell which is seen inside the thyroid it is getting it is changing into some other type of cell and it is multiplied in that group we have anaplastic so if you ask me which is the most commonest thyroid malignancy the answer is going to be papillary thyroid carcinoma the first one and if you ask me which is the most rare but prognosis is very bad and is very dangerous type the answer is anaplastic thyroid carcinoma this is rare but prognosis is very bad and it is the worst of the thyroid malignancy i should say that now the predisposing factors usually these type of cancers are seen in those patients who have been exposed to radiation previously or in a different scenario you have a second category where the patient is having goiter or thyroid enlargement for a long time and suddenly they notice thyroid gland enlargement and once it starts enlarging it rapidly enlarges in size with all its complication now what are the common types in this whatever the types let it be small cell or giant cell the prognosis is really bad and the survival rate is very short say about 1 or 1 and a half years not more than that now coming to the common presentations the patient will say that the patient has been having the thyroid swelling for a long time and suddenly of late the thyroid gland the neck swelling has increased in size and now it is rapidly increasing in size and as and when the progresses they'll have cough they'll have difficulty in swallowing and the, there'll be change of voice and as it progresses further they'll have breathing difficulty too and this malignancy it can spread spread from here to different parts of the body now on examination the thyroid gland on palpation will be hard it will be fixed and there may be some nodes on either side now we have to come to a diagnosis so we'll do an urgent ct uh, ultrasound scan and we'll take a biopsy now when you do a blood test we like to do thyroid function test which is going to be normal and we want to do serum thyroglobulin also because we want to know whether it is is it any other type of malignancy so in anaplastic thyroid carcinoma serum thyroglobulin is going to be negative now part of treatment is surgical planning so we need a ct scan or mri so if you ask me which is better the answer is going to be mri now this mri can be combined with pet scan positron emission tomography why because this gives a better picture of the whole body it shows us the main source where the cancer is and how far it has spread in the body and how much is it has involved different parts of the body coming to the treatment now if suppose a patient presents to us early we have to remove the, as much of thyroid gland as possible which is not going to be easy because this type of anaplastic carcinoma as i have already mentioned it infiltrates surrounding tissues so the treatment anyway is total thyroidectomy and we'll put a small hole here so that the patient can breathe normally which is called as tracheostomy i'll show you a picture of that followed by radiotherapy now the patient suppose the patient comes late in that case doing a thyroidectomy is out of cost so what we try to do is we'll do a tracheostomy followed by radiotherapy there is no role for radio ablation radio iodine ablation or chemotherapy so the main treatment plan uh, treatment will be surgery followed by external beam radiotherapy now this is a picture showing a patient with a tracheostomy tube so uh, the survival is going to be few months or years say one or one and a half years maximum so at the time of discharge the patient will be having a tracheostomy tube 
in position and in a nasogastric tube, a tube which goes into the stomach. So the patient has to eat through the, the feeding will be through the tube till he becomes normal and the breathing will be through the tracheostomy tube. Now coming to the next session that is external beam radiotherapy. So as soon as the initial part is done, the a 3D image CT scan will be taken. With this 3D uh, image, a special radio oncologist, they will do a mapping and they will see how far the, the radiation beam has to be given. The same mapping will be done in, on the patient also. With that, they will do tattooing, that is what we call as marking. So the patient will be taken to that radiotherapy room, they will be made to lie down on the table, they will do a tattooing and they will tell you to lie down in a particular position and they will tell you when you come on that particular day for radiation exposure, this is going to be the room, this is going to be your position and this position you have to lie down still for 10 to 20 minutes. There is a duration for a radiotherapy. So that, that doesn't mean that you are exposed to radiotherapy beam for 20 minutes. No, it hardly takes seconds only. But the whole procedure takes 10 to 20 minutes. So the simulation is also done. Now, the session, it's, it, it, uh, it starts from Monday to Friday and there is no exposures on Saturday and Sunday. And like this, you have to be exposed 4 to 6 weeks. So by 6 weeks, the whole procedure is done. That is about radiotherapy. Now, on the day of exposure, one nursing staff will come to you and you have to identify yourself and you will be taken to the room by you don't lie down on that uh, table, the same which you have done the previous, uh, the other day and they will ask you to lie down still for 10 to 20 minutes and they will move out of the room. That doesn't mean that you are alone because you have been monitored from by two, two or three doctors and one or two technicians just outside the room. So whatever you talk and whatever they talk, you will be able to listen. If you answer and they will be able to listen. So once the radiotherapy starts, they will tell you through the mic that if you are going to start it. And the procedure is over also, they will keep you informed. Now the exposure starts. You lie down for 10-20 minutes. When that is done, you can go back to your room. So during the 10-20 minutes, you will just hear the buzzing sound of the machine. You will not feel any local heat or anything like that. It hardly takes 10-20 minutes. Now, coming to the complications of radiotherapy. You will have changes in the skin. Initially, it will be slight red in color. You will have multiple blisters. And as and when it the radiotherapy session progresses, you will have the skin will become dark in color. It will become thick also. Second complication, you will become tired very fast. See, already the patient is aged. Anaplastic asthma is more common in the elderly. And we have already done a surgery for you. So you will become more tired. Now your food pattern is less. Your appetite is less. And over and above, your feeding is all to the nasogastric tube. And you are exposed to radiotherapy. So totally, you are going to be still tired. And during the session, there is a possibility that the blood count may come down. What are the other complications? There will be a change of voice. No, because already we have done tracheostomy. This is only for those patients where tracheostomy is not done. There will be breathing difficulty. The, again, the answer is no, because we have done a tracheostomy. This is only for those patients who have not undergone a tracheostomy. And last few things more, there will be dry mouth and uh, dryness on the eyes too. These are the common complications. So, during this treatment period of four to six weeks, say, say two months, what are the things you have to be careful of? You have to be in a well-balanced diet. Of course, a dietitian will come and see you. Balanced diet. Try to avoid oily foods. Drink as much of uh, water as possible and juice also. Or try to avoid coffee and uh, energy drinks and all. More of vegetables and salads will help you. And try to uh, walk around the room. Just don't be sitting in the chair or on the bed. Try. The more you ambulate, the better for you. So, the general prognosis of anaplastic carcinoma is not good because this is one of the worst malignancies of thyroid malignancy.
thyroid cancers. So that is all about anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. Thank you so much.